Hello and welcome. I received a replacement transistors for the Technix SA5250 stereo receiver. I ordered two matching pairs. One pair is the power output transistor and the other pair is the driver transistors here which I'm my finger is pointing at. I couldn't get the original replacement so I had to go online doing cross reference. Either you can do that or use a cross reference book. I don't I used to have books back in the day but not anymore so I had to do it this way. The first thing I'm going to do now is go ahead and solder in these two driver transistors onto the driver board here. And then I'll go ahead and go from there. So I put the matching pair of driver transistors back in and I of course I made double sure that I put them in correctly. I didn't get them mixed up or I didn't put them in backwards or something like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and go on to my next step. Now I'm going to head and clean up the heatsink area that the power transistors are the new power transistors are going to be mounted on. I've got some uh, alcohol I'm going to go ahead and clean everything clean everything off I'm also going to use the old mica insulators there's still one down in here and clean that up and put it back in if you can go ahead it's best I think is to get new ones but I couldn't find any so I'm going to clean up the old one they still still seem good and use those I'm going to there's one left I'm going to go ahead and carefully try to get it out without like breaking it. Okay, it's... There it goes, it's all sticky. and sticking straight to my hand because of the old, uh, little heat, uh, old thermal paste on there. So I put the driver board back in and I got the area cleaned up. Now I'm going to go ahead and prep the transistors for mounting. I've got my thermal compound here. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and apply it. This is actually, I bought this thermal compound for use for use on a laptop. But it's I don't have the other kind anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and use this. This is kind of messy. I'm going to go ahead and put the mica insulator on. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply some more compound to the, some more this thermal compound to the other side of the mica insulator, the part that contacts the heat sink.
So I've got everything put back together and I'm about ready to fire this thing up. I've got my uh, dummy load hooked up here and I'm feeding in, going to feed in a thousand hertz sine wave here to both channels. I've got the oscilloscope hooked up and all I have to do is turn it on. Ideally you should use a variac with an isolation transformer and also have a ammeter in between your DC power supply and your output stage but I don't have that so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take that risk. The only reason I'm doing the work on this receiver it's not really worth very much money I think but it's just I don't feel good just about throwing it in the trash so I'm gonna go ahead and see what happens turn down the volume and then turn it on okay nothing happened that's good um see what happens when I go ahead and turn on my volume Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that. Just um, hook up a set of speakers quick and that'll be it. There is one more thing I have to do though before I hook up the speakers. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the ICQ, the bias. Um, I managed to get a hold of the service manual and the service manual said to adjust to 5 millivolts. As you can see, I've already got my leads hooked up here, so I don't go ahead and slip while trying to measure and make the adjustment at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and make my adjustment here. I've got it. It's five point something. I'm going to go ahead and turn it down a little bit. Okay, it's about five now. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that and do the other channel. 